gamers i am back with another video and today we're going to do the uh expected desired wanted civ tier list disclaimer it is way too early uh since the expansion has dropped so you should not take this at face value and it will also probably change within two three four weeks and i think uh in the next minor patch some balance stuff might change so the meta is still developing the new sieves are being learned um there's new builds coming out every day for the new sieves there's a lot of information to process to go through but i wanted to make a video giving my opinion on which sieves are right now the best uh recently i hosted a hidden cup that included the top top players and all sieves were played and i also have some insight in which sieves they picked which sieves they banned and so on and so forth um let's get into it again this is not a sieve tier list for gold league i don't know what's good good in gold league with that being said uh let's get started one of the strongest sieves i think right now and from the hidden cup it was first picked uh, many times or it was at least in priority picks was Malian. Uh, I think Malian is just really good. It, it actually plays really well into the new sieves as well. So Malian was also obviously a really good sieve for a while uh, against all the old sieves, but against the new sieves as well, uh, it does pretty well into Ayubids, it does really well into Byzantines, um, it does decent into Japanese, Against Jean d'Arc, it does really well because javelin throwers can pop a hero really, really quickly and really, really fast. Against OTD, they hard, hard counter all their units. And against uh, Jushi's Legacy, I think they have a massive timing where they can do damage. So I think Malians doesn't really have bad matchups. Uh, there's some sieves that it counters pretty, pretty hard. But in general, uh, I would say it doesn't really have any hard counters. And if you play Malians well... Um, I don't I don't I don't really see like which sieve is, is supposed to be played against them so I think they're very very good next one we'll be talking about is going to be is going to be Abbasid um, I think Abbasid overall is just a very very good sieve uh, very similar to Malians I don't think it's OP but it's very similar to Malians to where it doesn't really have weaknesses um, you can always pretty much go 2TC and once you start rolling, it, it is very, very strong. It's incredibly strong. So I think Malian is gonna be, or sorry, obviously it's gonna be into A tier. Obviously this Civ tier list for old Civs, uh, um, compared to the old Civ tier list where we only had the 10 Civs will be different regarding ranking the old Civs. And you might be like wondering like, okay, why did Abbasid or Malian change when no balances change for those Civs? Or something like that well the reason is we have six more civilizations that they're interacting with and i also think that abbasid is pretty good into new civs and it still has all the strengths it used to have next civ we'll be talking about is going to be um is going to be ayubid ayubid right now is extremely extremely good um the pro players want the civ nerfed the Gamba Wing is too strong. The fact that you can RNG into making like six extra villagers in Feudal Age immediately is kind of wild. Uh, their fast age up wings on the hybrid maps are probably just making them the strongest civs on the hybrid maps too. And they have cheaper docks. So there's just a lot of wings that they have that are really, really strong. The Desert Raiders are actually stronger than I, than I thought initially they would be. So I think it's just a very, very strong civ. You can play it aggro. You can play it, um, you know, Russian castles. You, you can play it in many different ways, and I think it's it's the it's probably the fact that it's more diverse than Abbasid. Abbasid is very straightforward. You know what you expect with Abbasid, but Abbasid can do many many different things. Next sieve we'll be talking about is going to be. I'm trying to base like the sieves that I consider on the same level as these. But I'm going to say Jean d'Arc, I think, is an S tier Civ. We did see it banned a few times, but at the pro level play, there are some people that are not quite good with this Civ. Um, so I have seen either, like, I've seen very mixed results. I've seen players that are really good with this Civ, and I've seen players that don't really know how to 
quickly level up the hero and then they end up just having level 2 hero forever in feudal and end up losing the game. The problem with this Civ is it's either too strong or it just sucks. There's no middle ground right now. Uh, if you level up to level 3 in feudal, I feel like you just win the game. But if you don't and the game reaches castle and then you level up to level 3, I feel like the Civ is pretty weak. So I'm sure we're going to see some kind of adjustments to the hero. But I feel like if the hero gets nerfed, then something else needs to be buffed because the Civ is so, so dependent on the hero that any touches on the hero will make the Civ a lot weaker or a lot more broken, depending, um, you know, depending which way you go. The next Civ we'll be talking about is going to be, I would say China is probably into A tier. Uh, the reason why China is A tier is they have a lot of strengths. Obviously, they have super strong Imperial. Uh, they have Barbican for early defense. They're strong on hybrid maps. They're strong on water maps. Um, but I do think that um, China struggles a little bit in the current meta to transition to food in time because their food transition is very expensive. And you usually cannot get all the food sources in China. So I would give them an A tier because of that, but overall, still, uh, I think China is, is pretty strong. And, you know, it's been strong for a while. Next one we'll be talking about is going to be actually I don't know if I need five tiers because I I generally don't believe there's a sieve that's terrible. I don't think any sieve is like truly unplayable. You know what I mean? So I'm gonna rate them like that because it, it's it's like I don't want to put a sieve is a D tier because I don't think there's any D tier civs. I think oh like I'm looking at these and, and I don't know what to put in D tier. I know a lot of people will be like, oh T D is D tier. It's not. It's not that bad. Um I think it's completely fine and playable. So we're gonna go with we're gonna go with, with this, okay? Another civ that most likely needs a nerf is going to be Jushi's legacy. So Mali and Cow okay let me let me re redirect this video a little bit. So I've kind of talked about Avacid, talked about China. Malian uh, uh, income, passive income probably needs a nerf. But I would like them to see be buffed somewhere else. Perhaps in the Imperial Age. Because right now they're like sofa spam with javelin throwers and Donzas is too strong. But if that were to somehow get nerfed, they would need buffs somewhere else. Iobid, I've talked about why. Jean d'Arc, I talked about why. But I would like to see something else buffed for the Civ. Jushi's legacy is very similar to China in feudal age. The difference is Jushi's legacy has uh, the Song Dynasty. I think is the real problem actually with that Civ. As funny as it is, um, there's the bald build. You know the Shaolin Monk Rush, which I don't think is that big of a problem. I think the bigger problem is the Song Dynasty. When what it does is it makes your buildings forty percent cheaper your eco buildings including farms and granaries so their farm transition is 45 wood per farm which is crazy um, there's like a lot of builds at the pro level play where you actually just go for your first berries and sheep and then you immediately go into farms like and then once they set up the farms they, their food is just through the roof and they're spamming so many units you can't hold um, I also think meditation gardens is probably too strong so I do think it needs slight nerf. I don't think it's like unbeatable or anything, uh, but probably needs a little tuning as far as um, as far as that go. Again, I don't think any of these saves is like unbeatable. I don't think any of these saves like I'm not like oh my god I'm playing against I but I guess I lost. I hate the Gamba wing, but it's not unbeatable or anything like that. Um. Next Civ is going to be Delhi. I think Delhi is pretty good in the current meta. It does a pretty good job at punishing the new Civs, at just forcing them out on the map and killing them. So I like Delhi. Uh, Delhi has been picked quite a bit in the Hidden Cup somewhat early. People were doing quite a bit of aggression with Delhi as you usually do and with great success actually. Um, so thumbs up for Delhi. The first city that needs a slight buff is going to be Holy Roman Empire. Now, I do think that Holy Roman Empire in Imperial is probably too strong. Like, the units are just never ending because of Akin Chapel. But I do think that HRE in Feudal is probably one of the weakest civs. Um, and 
and I, I would like to see some buff to them in Feudal. I don't know what kind of buff, but they would need something. Uh, maybe making it, the problem is, like, maybe making it so that, I don't know, you can produce prelates out of mine work, or, or like, I don't know, something. They need something in Feudal. It just, it just not quite there, but I'm not sure what they need. That's the problem. Um, so, yeah. But other than that, in Castle and Imperial, they're great. They're great. I would just like to see buff in Feudal Age, specifically. Um, the next civilization that needs a buff is OOTD. Now, uh, there's been a lot of outcry about OOTD, like how bad it is, how awful it is. I actually don't think OOTD is bad at all. Uh, I think OOTD is quite good. I have won already a lot of games in, in Super Late Imperial with OOTD. I have won games in Feudal Age with OOTD. I have won games in... Um, Castle is OTD. I actually think that uh, OTD is way better in Feudal Age than HRE. Like way, way, way better. If you want to stick in Feudal, OTD is a lot better. But the economy is just weird. Um, so I've said this when I played OTD the first time and I've said it when the game released. There is something wrong with the economy. And then some people did some math regarding their villagers gathering faster in the villager production time and the cost and the, the math is off okay it, it it has worse economy period so what they need is not some crazy massive buffs i would like them to just receive like i don't know their villager instead of 24 seconds it produces in 21 or 22 or, or just put it at 20 like like something they're economically not great uh, army wise i think their army is very very interesting and i've said this before but lotd at a low league is i think easy to play because you have less units to work with but at a high level they're actually really hard because any unit you lose might be like game ending so i do think they're good i do think they can fight against uh, most of these civs but their economy is just a little bit off and um I think chapel could be buffed as well to like 20%. Um, but maybe that's going to make them too strong and feudal. Maybe their chapel should scale with age. I think that would maybe be a good idea. Maybe the first chapel is 10% or 15%. Then the next chapel is like 20%, let's say. Or not the next chapel. When you edge up to castle, your chapel goes to 20% gathering speed. When you edge up to imperial, it goes up to 30%. Something like that. Because in its current state, it's... The chapel and mine work are not great landmarks at all and also i think burgrave pretty underwhelming um so i think their landmarks maybe need some buff maybe some villager reduction cost or just production speed something i don't know the next thing we'll be talking about is rus i don't think rus is that good anymore i'm gonna be honest i don't know if it's the new civs i have played against the rus i have played with rus and I do think it's a great sieve, don't get me wrong, it's not a bad sieve, it doesn't need a buff, uh, it doesn't need a nerf either though. I think it's pretty good, but yeah, I, I, I don't I don't think it's that overwhelming, and in the Hidden Cup actually, uh, Roos wasn't, nerf, uh, wasn't uh, vetoed once, and he wasn't even picked uh, first once, it was picked quite later on, like as a 4th, 5th, 6th sieve, something like that out of 10 picks so it was not prioritized and then the games we've seen with Rus it actually lost I think most of the games so I don't think it lost because it's necessarily bad but I just don't think it's that good anymore uh, as it used to be again new civs came into play some things got changed and uh, yeah I think Rus is good but you know not not OP there it is um, next one we'll be talking about is going to be Byzantines and I'm going to do something that you might never have expected. The Byzantines do not need a buff in my opinion. I think Byzantine is completely fine as it is. I think it's a very very strong sieve. People just don't know how to play it. Period. Uh, I've started playing a build recently by uh, that I saw from one of the developers uh, called Mito and he was doing the triple cistern 
before he hits feudal age and it buffs your villagers gather speed to 15 percent so it feels like your villager basically all your villagers have have almost like half the icon chapel and it boosts your economy quite a bit and it's quite noticeable i do think it's a complicated sim to play it's a very complicated sim to play but i don't think it needs a buff i actually think that byzantines is incredibly incredibly strong in the late game um like incredibly strong in the late game i'm not gonna say it's the best sim in the late game but it's up there um it can produce seeds for just oil so that means you not only you're getting gold but you're also getting wood for the cost of oil um and i do think that pro players have been experimenting a lot with the hippodrome and a lot of the pro players have been using horsemen to triumph ability to like even kill spearmen to kill armies and every time you kill unit the the triumph you get more stacks and you can just kind of keep your cavalry stacked on the buff which is seeming now too strong initially i thought it's not a great ability but now i think it's pretty strong i would not be surprised if it gets nerfed and i would not be surprised if the winery landmark gets some buffs because uh once it gets rolling it feels like the enemy cavalry is just triumph the whole time so yeah i do think that byzantine will take a very long time for people to play well and even then even at the top level i don't think everyone will play them well just like china um just like hrn land maps not every pro knows how to play them well and i think that's okay and i don't think i know it's a new sieve and a lot, i know a lot of people want to play byzantines and win but i don't think that this sieve will most likely ever do well in low leagues like china I think it's just hard to play and and that's it um so i think in lower leagues it's always going to have bad win rates and there's no amount of balancing that's going to fix that it's just a hard sieve unless they dumb it down somehow and make it a lot easier to play i don't expect that to change but i do expect the win rates with this sieve in high conquer to increase over time um so yeah and i'll be making a second guide for byzantines very very soon and I actually have there's actually two new build orders that came out for Byzantine, so I might make even two guides. There's uh, the one TC build from Byzantines, not the one I made the guide for, but there's another build now that's out that I've recently played in a tournament that I wish I can show you guys. Uh, it is very very strong, and one TC, TC Byzantines is super strong. Their units are very very strong, and uh, there's also two TC Mercenary build that's been popular too. So. Yep. Next sim we'll be talking about is going to be uh, Mongol. I think Mongol are fine. Nothing spectacular, nothing amazing. They're pretty good. Uh, on the maps you can trade, they're pretty good. On hybrid maps, they're pretty good. I think overall, just uh, the neutral word is almost invisible. There you go. Um, yeah, I think they're pretty good. I don't think they need any buffs, I don't think they need any nerfs and uh, that's it I, I don't know what else to say it's a good sieve it's a good sieve uh, next sieve we'll be talking about is Japanese um, now this one is rough I feel like this sieve needs a buff and a nerf and it's okay um, so I also feel Japanese is very unexplored uh, Probably the most not figured out sieve, I would say. There's been some builds coming out recently with two town centers, but I feel like there's so much more possibility with Japanese that it's hard to pinpoint exactly what they should be doing, what they should be playing, and so on. So I kind of feel like for some things they need buff, for some things they're okay, for some things they need a nerf. But overall, we're going to put them in the neutral zone because I don't think that people have played them enough and figured them out enough. Uh, Japanese has obviously Ozotsu need nerf immediately they're way too strong their armor needs to be removed uh, like they, they have like four four armor or something that's without upgrades like their melee armor or range armor needs to be removed because right now there are no units that counter them right the best counter for them is Mangono um, horsemen don't really hit them that hard archers don't really hit them that hard so I don't know what's supposed to kill them 
So Ozotsu probably need a nerf. The passive, uh, passive uh, uh, Yoroshima. What are, what are they called? Probably needs a nerf. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be honest. That thing gives you 75 gold per minute, which was equivalent to a relic. So the moment you age up, you get two relics in your base, and then you can put another relic every four minutes. It's too strong. Like it's just way too strong. The other landmark needs a buff because I'm gonna be honest, I have never made it once. I've seen the unit, I've seen what it does, and I was like, okay, cool. So we're never gonna make that. The reason we're never gonna make that is because the um, the the Shinto Shrine is that what it's called? Is just way too good. It's just way too good. Period. There's no reason to make anything else uh, or the other landmark. It's way too good. Uh, regarding the the other Imperial landmark is pretty bad to keep. Again, the gunsmith for Ozotsu is too strong. And the fact that it spawns three units is a bit wild to me. Um, yeah, I would like to see Castle landmark get buffed. The other one, not the Shinto Shrine, but the other one get buffed. The Shinto Shrine should get a nerf. And then in Feudal, I think, I think what we have in Feudal right now is okay. We have the Storehouse, which is very strong. Um, and then we have the Kaka Township, which is the place that produces Shinobis. Now, I do think that Shinobis are too strong on hybrid maps. They, like, disabling on buildings, I think, is too strong. 30 seconds and burn damage is a bit wild. And the reason why it's strong on hybrid maps is you go, uh, Shinobis, you disable the dock, you make ships, and you just kill them. So... Yeah, I, I don't know. It's too strong. But on the other side, I do think Shinobis are a bit, not a bit, but pretty weak on land maps, like without water. So I would like something to be done to Shinobis where they're slightly less strong on water or hybrid maps, but a bit better on land maps. Because on land maps, it's so hard to get in there and actually do anything uh, that I would like to see them um, somehow buff them a little bit, buff there a little bit. And um, yeah, regarding their units, uh, I mean, I think Samurais are really, really strong in Feudal, actually. Uh, so in general, uh, Sims that have men at arms in Feudal uh, can just like go men at arms and win kind of thing. But I feel that Japanese can. So I would like them to see maybe like a plus, like one armor, Reims armor nerfed or, or something nerfed in Feudal. Because I do think they're too strong there. But then on the other side, I think their archers are a bit too weak, uh, in my opinion. The fact that they need plus one and bannermen to, to be like other archers feels a bit off. They are cheaper, they are uh, faster, but I don't know. I personally don't like them. And if you don't know, crossbow for Japanese are on a mushas where they're basically cavalry, but they're more expensive. They actually deal less damage than the crossbow. And the advantage, the advantage is that they are cavalry, but you don't need your crossbow to be mobile. So the advantage of the crossbows is kind of pointless in a way because yeah, you don't you don't need your crossbows to to run on a horse. You need them to do damage. And right now, their DPS is not that great. So I would like to see their units, range units, maybe get slight buff, samurai slight nerf, landmarks, and so on. But we're gonna put it in neutral from now on because I don't think it's like dominating or I don't think it's unbeatable or anything like that. Next one is going to be English. English has been uh, pretty consistent throughout this game and I think that English if I had to rate him in uh, tiers you know like for the past few tiers I've put English in like C tier or sometimes even D tier I think I would actually say right now English if we made a, a five tier list I would probably put English in like a B plus or A minus maybe even just A straight up the reason for that is the second TC nerf so second TC, basically the range got nerfed, there's less garrison space, so if the opponent goes 2 TC, you can actually attack their villagers while they're gathering the deer and the TC won't be able to reach you. So this was actually a massive buff to English, uh, playing against any civ that goes to town centers. But other than that, I mean English is the old English, the rest of it is still the same, but that part does make a little bit of a difference and it does pretty well into the new civs uh, as well. It can snipe 
the um, Jean d'Arc uh, hero. It can kill Zuginu from Jushi in Feudal. It can snipe the OTD units from range. Uh, it can snipe the Bannerman from Japanese. It does pretty well. So I think it's quite good. By the way, this is not the order of like how strong they are. I'm just putting them in the same tier. Same thing for this. I'm not saying that Mali needs the most nerf. I'm just... They're just same tier. Um, next sip is going to be French. Um, I think that French is... Uh, pretty good right now i think it does pretty well into most sieves i don't think it really has any counters i think it's just a good uh standard sieve i don't think it has any like insane strengths to the point where oh my god it's okay well the red palace is pretty op and that needs to be nerfed actually but i'm not gonna put it in nerf tier just because one thing needs to be nerfed i do think they're pretty good they're pretty strong um and people are still playing it it was actually picked quite a lot in the hidden cup i'll talk more about the picks in a second um and then we have last but not least ottoman who i actually think should get nerfed but i'm gonna put him here and i'll explain why i actually think that ottoman in imperial is too strong and i can't believe i'm gonna say that but it's, I mean, China is also too strong, don't get me wrong. So I'm not going to put every sieve into the nerf tier unless they need like five nerfs. But I think Ottoman Great Bombard is way too tanky. Like, I like the fact that they have this Great Bombard and it's strong and it's like when you see it, it's like, oh fuck. But having eight Springles, like you need eight Springles to one shot a Great Bombard, that's a bit too fucking wild. Like, I need 24 supply of units. Is it 7 with the upgrade? Even if it's 7. 7, 8, doesn't matter. That's way too many. I need 21, 24 supply to kill one unit. Yeah, I think it's 7 without an 8 with. Which is, like, way too much. It's just way too much. And you know what the biggest problem is? If the enemy has 3 great bombards, you are about to shoot at 1. They, they you know set up and then they just one shot the springles so you kill one and then the other two kill your two springles and by the time your springles recharge you can't one shot anymore so i don't know there's something wrong there you cannot make cavalry against ottoman uh because of their janissaries like they just completely annihilate cavalry and i understand that's like the point of the sieve is to counter like janissaries to counter cavalry but crossbows are also suppo supposed to counter men at arms, but it, it's like if you see crossbows, you're like, you're not like, well, I guess I cannot make an armored unit. You know, you still can make armored unit, but against with uh, Ottoman, sorry, you could not make cavalry. So what I would like to see for Ottoman, I would like the Great Bomber to keep the strength that it has, but in my opinion, it should either be more supply or the HP uh, should be reduced. Like... If it takes seven Springle to one shot it, it, it should be like five, six, maybe something like that. What I would also like to see for Byzantines, or I keep saying Byzantines, for Ottoman, is for their uh, Janissary damage to be buffed against normal units and nerfed against cavalry. So uh, I don't know the exact number values, but if it has 10 damage, or if it has five damage against every unit and plus 15 against cavalry, I would like Janissaries to have 10 damage against everything and then like, you know, plus 8 or, or plus 10. Uh, well, not plus 10, that would be the same amount. But for example, if it goes from uh, plus 5 against everything and plus 15 against cavalry, I would like it to be like plus 10 versus or 10 damage versus everything and then like plus 6, 7, 8 versus cavalry. So it gets nerfed versus cavalry a little bit, but it gets buffed. So it can actually be used as a hand cannoneer against other sieves. Not as strong as Hand Cannoneer, but it does more damage to other units. Because right now it seems like what they counter, they absolutely butcher. But then against some other stuff, they're pretty meh. Uh, so, yeah, that's kind of how I feel about it. I think that's pretty much it. Regarding the Hidden Cup, so let me tell you this. Uh, I've hosted a tournament, the Hidden Cup, where all the players' names were unknown. They were n Nobody knew who was playing who. So the players had to pick and veto sieves based on what they thought was the best. The most vetoed sieves in the tournaments were Ayubid, China, Jean d'Arc, 
Jushi's Legacy, and I think it was sometimes Mongol. Um, the most pixives were Malian, which actually surprised me that no one was beating Malian because Malian was almost uh, picked in the first one, two, three sieves always. Basically, every player had five picks on their side, no mirrors. Uh, the sieves that were picked the most, I would say, are Malian, Abbasid, Rus, and probably, I would say, Ottoman, actually. Sometimes Mongol, depending if there was hybrid maps. Then we had, continuing, Mongol, English, French, uh, Delhi. And then, let's say, I don't know, Japanese, depending which sieves were vetoed, right? Because uh, there were three vetoes on each side. And then the sieve that would get le uh, you know, left over for the end and were picked probably bottom three almost always were Byzantines, OTD, and HRE. And again, I don't think Byzantines were not picked because they're shit. I think Byzantines were not picked because people don't know how to play them. And then HRE and OTD, similar thing. I don't think every pro player knows how to play them, but also because they are a just a little bit weaker. Not to the point where, oh, this is unplayable, this is why I'm losing games just needs a little a little bit of help so that is it actually OTD had a very good win rate and HRE in the tournament just yeah not not a top pick for players but I think Malian did probably the best in the tournament winning the most games so yeah there it is that's it I hope you guys uh, that are watching this on YouTube enjoy the video learn something new please if you're playing HRE or OTD, or if you're playing against Malian or Ayubid or John Dark or, or Jushi, you're not losing because they're too strong. You're not losing because your save sucks. You're losing because you suck. And with that, YouTube gamers, check me out on Twitch, I'm probably live right now. Twitch gamers, let's keep going.